and we're on. Um, this is a new a new show. Um, we're getting into it. We thought we'd we're both massive UFC and MMA fans. Um, I'm Joe. This is Sam. Uh, how are you doing, Sam? Yeah, good. But yeah, looking forward to this weekend. Yeah, should be uh, should be a good card. Not as not as good as uh, the old three hundred, is it? This one, but yeah, looking forward to it uh, nonetheless. Well, yeah, that I think that <laughs> on a quick one on the uh, UFC three hundred, one of the I think it now has took over as the greatest event of all time. Um, there were calls beforehand, weren't they, about it? And I wasn't sure. I love some of them McGregor cards could never be beat in my what made me a, a ginormous MMA fan, but it come it definitely come close and probably picked it for me. It was some of them fights. Max Holloway's turned himself into one of the biggest stars ever in the sport. And yeah, it what a what an event. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, loved it. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, some great fights. Yeah, and, and hopefully some of the picks can be good as well. Um, I actually, I'd haul away in that one. In some of the previews that I that I wrote, I, can't, I fancied him for it uh, as that. So, yeah, hopefully we can get a few a few picks off uh, and preview the fights and yeah, have a bit of a laugh along the way. Well, well, we'll get into it. UFC 3 I'm just doing the main card um, for this show. Um but the first fight of the night, uh, it's 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 a lad, it's a lad from uh, Great Britain. It's Paul Craig um, versus Cal Burhal Burhalho. You might have to help me there, Sam. The pronunciation. Yeah, Burhalho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting one, isn't it? This one uh, with Paul Craig. Obviously, we know what we're getting with Paul Craig. Pure madness. Anything can happen with him and Kai Barillo. Yeah, he's he's an interesting fighter, isn't he? He's he looks good. Uh, for me, he's five and zero oh, uh, in the UFC, but I just kind of think he's still waiting for that like breakout moment. He's he, he's had four decision wins so far, one submission. He's not had that knockout. He looks nice on the feet, the, like wide stance. Um, yeah, you know, he, he hits pretty hard, and I just don't know. I, I I like him, and I think maybe the UFC is setting him up for this one because Paul Craig, uh, as we know, uh, a mad fighter. He's nine and seven in the UFC all entertaining fights. He can win a fight from anywhere. He can lose it at any point uh, as well. Now campaigning at middleweight <laughs> where he's one on one dropping down from light heavyweight. And I don't know. I, he's, he's kind of a mad fighter, isn't he? So I, I'm kind of thinking the UFC are looking for Brillo to make a bit of a statement here and, uh, uh, and, and, Finish Paul Craig, who's only ever gone to decision twice uh, in his career. One was a draw in Brazil against Shogun back in 2019. Um, and, and he's had one other decision on his record, which he lost. But everything else has either been uh, a win by finish or he's he's been knocked out or subbed a couple of times uh, as well. So anything can happen when Paul Craig fights. So this should be a banger to kick it off. I love his. I'm, I'm a I'm a jujitsu man. Uh, for people who don't know, obviously who don't know me, I'm I've started my journey two years ago, so I'm not a good jujitsu man, but I'm uh, I'm, I'm in the process as everyone who uh, does jiu-jitsu knows so I'm a massive Paul Craig fan he's one of the most exciting ground fighters I've seen he's beat he's beat some fighters who I think he completely lost to his brilliance at the triangle his brilliance off his back um so if this Cal Buralio I'm really struggling with that one Buralio comes in aggressive steps in he's like I said he's good all over the park um all over the octagon He'll, I think he'll be dominating this. I've got to be honest, I think he'll dominate and whether Paul Craig can get that submission off. We know how good he is on the ground, off his back, hurt, injured. As you said, he, he doesn't go to decision. He leaves it all out there. I just... My, my take on Paul is he's an animal of a man, brilliant ground fighting. I just don't know. Sometimes he's, he, he doesn't he doesn't take lots and lots of damage, Sam. I, I don't know how much damage mm. he's willing to take. Not, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go on. No, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, he's kind of been talking, hasn't he, ahead of this one, like that he's he's kind of been working on the stand up now for a couple of years, and I don't know, I think that that's kind of like the the concern for me a little bit that you know he's he's brilliant on the ground, but MMA has kind of evolved probably since his his kind of best best wins, you know, three, four, five years ago, uh, back now even longer, you know, when he. Um, when he subbed uh, Ankalaev, well, that was 2018, I think, in the last second of the a third round. And I think, I don't know, when he, when he's trying to like, evolve his game and trying to be a bit more stand-up, 
I think when he's going to come into someone, you know, like a like a Barillo, um, you know, Brendan Allen last time out, you know, well-rounded guy. He lost to Johnny Walker uh, as well, knocked out in the in the first round. I think these are where you know now now Paul Craig is is going to struggle, even dropping down as as a middleweight. I think if he starts to want to stand up more, then I, I just I, I just can't see him. Uh, you know, winning, winning a fight like this against someone who is you know, attractive on the feet like like Murillo is. Yeah, well, let's get it in. I think it was a, <laughs> we'll get our picks in. Sam, who have you got, Barillo or Paul Craig? Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going Barillo. I know he's like massive favourites, and a lot of these Brazilians are, aren't they, on this this yeah. card to uh, to get him by finish. Um, you know, in, in English money, you can get him at, at seven to ten. So shades of our odds on uh, for him to win um, any fighter to win by submission. Which I thought was a, a, not a, not a bad bet, given Paul Craig, you know, can can throw one up from, you know, at, at any point in the, in the fight and uh, and maybe snatch snatch this one. Uh, it's thirty three to twenty. Oh, obviously, Barillo's had one one sub in the UFC so far. So you know, Paul Craig's had uh, had quite a few on uh, his his record. I think he's had six submission wins. Paul Craig. So. You know, a couple there, but I do think Barillo's going to win. I think the UFC are, are kind of trying to push a couple of uh, of potential stars on this uh, on this card to get you know some some nice showcase finishes, and I think Barillo could could kick it off. Yeah, I've got him by KO, TKO, or disqualification. That's just the the way they classify it. I think he's the. Uh, I think he's like I said, he's got to get that highlight win. Paul Craig is not brilliant on the feet; it doesn't take too much damage on the feet, but. Um, what I've just seen here, though, is Paul Craig's submission method of victory is being boosted to 11 to 1. If that's not worth a punt, Sam, I don't know what is. So uh, I think I'll have a cheeky uh, pick on Paul Craig's submission, as we've said. If he's going to win, most it's not going to be by, it's very unlikely going to be by TKO or decision. It's going to be by this submission, and that's a fantastic bet for a last minute Paul Craig uh, hero submission, as he's uh, famously done a couple of times now. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, if if Barillo kind of get your knockout is is kind of your main bet, it's always worth, isn't it? Just a little little cheeky saver on, especially at those odds on Paul <laughs> Craig getting a submission, and, you know, with six subs on his on it on his record out of um, what what is it nine UFC wins? Uh, I think it is. You know, it's they're good odds. Yeah, I'm all over that. Um, the next fight, another middleweight fight. We've got Michelle Pereira versus Ayo Poteria. Um, what I think on this one is, I'll, I'll give it to you, Sam, but Michelle Pereira, if you're a casual fan, this is the fight to watch. Sam, take us through it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, Michelle uh, Pereira, you know, uh, again, if you know, Barillo, you know, attractive on the feet, but if he's attractive on the feet, then, you know, Pereira's, you know, supermodel uh, worthy. Uh, you know, he's fantastic to watch, uh, you know, from his debut where he knocked out Danny Roberts. He's doing all sorts. He's, he's kind of bouncing off the cage. He's, you know, he's flashy. He's, he comes in dancing, he'll go out dancing and he'll dance through the fight as well until he normally scores a knockout. So yeah, Pereira, you know, really attractive fighter uh, to watch, uh, doing well for himself. Uh, now, again, another one uh, in a, in a new weight division now campaigning at, at middleweight, uh, obviously after that fight last year with uh, Wonderboy uh, was, uh, was called off, uh, wasn't it? With, with uh, Wonderboy not willing to take the fight with Pereira weighing in over. So maybe, you know, now in a more natural weight class, um, for himself, uh, Pereira uh, as well, and he you know he looks he looks good. He's um, two and zero uh, in his uh, new uh, weight division. I think he's won both by uh, knockout as uh, as well. I think he stopped both yeah in, the, in both in the first round. Uh, one one uh, sub actually uh, last time out. Uh, rear naked choke in the first, uh, and then yeah knocked out Andre uh, Petrosky in his debut. Uh, middleweight in the in the first round uh, as well so yeah he, he, he might not be around um too long in this this fight because i don't think uh patera is up to much although he has dropped down from light heavyweight he's he's not got the best record in the ufc uh the ukrainian uh so i think this one it is kind of opened up uh for again uh, a brazilian to look good uh, on this card, so yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of fancying uh, Pereira early in in this one. Pretoria uh, missed weight last time as well, actually, um, at light heavyweight. So he's now um, 
uh, he so he missed weight last time out. Uh, so yeah, I, I kind of think he won that fight as well uh, by unanimous decision. I think he was over a couple of pounds. But yeah, against someone like Pereira, yeah, I'm not having it. He's now two and three in the in the UFC, and against someone like Pereira, who's on a seven fight winning streak, I've got Pereira early all day long. Yeah, I think that as you said, the only the only thing I can notice is Pereira is normally the bigger fighter. He's 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 a large large man, one of them weight cut bullies. You could say he's he's, he's ginormous in the octagon. You can't believe he's been at welterweight. He's Obviously, as you said, now at middleweight, looking strong, looking healthy, probably done him justice moving back up so he's not have to do such a crazy weight cut. Um, but Pateri is, is six foot three, uh, got actually a reach advantage on Pereira, which I don't think there's many fighters who have had a reach advantage over Pereira over the years. Uh, so I think that's the o- that could be the only diff- that could be the only way that Pateri gets in here, catches him lucky. He's, I've seen him a few times. Personally, I'm not too impressed by him. Michelle Pereira, famously, as you said, crazy, crazy fighter. Lost fights purely because he's trying to be too crazy. Um, trying to put on too much of a show, do too much flipping. He tired himself out and he got a few losses a couple of years ago, but he's been on a five-fight win streak. I think he's got his head right. He's going for gold. Uh, he's 30 years old now, so he's, he's, he's got probably a couple of years left where he's going to go and try and get that title run. So, I've, yeah, I've got Pereira by knockout. Yeah, I like, I like that. I've, yeah, Pereira, I've, you can get him uh, inside. Uh, it's winning the first uh, couple of rounds, uh, which is, again, just, just shares of odds on uh, at one to two. Uh, first round KO uh, is two to one uh, for Pereira. So I kind of like one of those. But, again, you're not getting massive odds on, on another, another huge favourite here. But, yeah, I think he's going to... He's going to look good and have too many angles and too much, too much for uh, uh, for Pateria, uh, who yeah, I, I don't think he'll be up to much. I think he's going to um, you know vibe off the off the Brazilian crowd for this one, Pereira, uh, and and get the get the job done. Like you said, he, he, he a few years ago he was probably a little more crazy. Now he's kind of dialed it back in a little little bit, a bit more mature. Uh, and I think yeah, he's on he's on a tear. So I, I can't see that stopping, you know, against one like Pateria. Yeah, next fight, Sam. Following on from your Brazilian line, how they're feeding some fighters to the Wolves, and he's he's he's, he's been a fan favourite for a couple of years. He's, he's had an up and down career. It's Anthony Smith versus Vitor Petrino. Um, I, I'm, yeah. I, I'll quickly, I think it's following your line, Sam. I think they're setting up for a big Brazilian win. The Brazilians don't like the fighters to lose, and I don't think anything's changing. But I'll let you take us uh, through it, Sam. Yeah, uh, Anthony Smith, obviously one-time light heavyweight title challenger, losing to John Jones in 2019, wasn't it? A unanimous decision, defeat. Uh, and since then, his kind of career has, I, I think, stuttered at best. I, I don't know how you'd describe it. He's five and six since that loss to John Jones, you know, five years ago uh, now. And, yeah, he just he's kind of hasn't been able to get any momentum uh, Anthony Smith, uh, whatsoever, uh, since then, you know, his, his record in, in recent fights, you know, isn't great, uh, either, uh, what has he got a one, one winning four, um, you know, defeating Ryan Spann and, and Ryan Spann, you know, two of his last five uh, wins cause he, he beat uh, Spann in 21, uh, and then in 23 as well, after, uh, you know, defeats to, uh, and, and, and Johnny Walker got, a, had a rematch with Spann, won that by split decision and then knocked out last time by Khalil Roundtree Jr. Uh, who is you know, on a tear himself uh, in this division. So he's kind of almost getting that gatekeeper status. And, and I think where he's, he was once maybe a gatekeeper to the top, to the top five, he was that guy that, you know, was always potentially going to, going to drop out. Um, you know, as he, as he gets older, now he's kind of finding himself in that place where, you know, ranked number 10 now in, in the division, he's, he's on a, uh, a bad run. And, and now he's got these young hungry lions coming for him, you know, that, that maybe don't have a ranking or a rank 15, uh, you know, trying to take his top 10 spot. And that's exactly, as you said, what you have, what the UFC are looking at this weekend with Vito, uh, Petrino, he's on a tear, he's four and all in the UFC. He's been in the, uh, in the organization 30 months uh, he's been busy 
four fights in there before he got into the UFC. If you look at his pro record, it's just littered with with KOs and TKOs. He's he's found it a little bit more difficult just to find his feet in in the UFC. Um, um, a, a decision win against Anton Turkalj in his in his debut he was knocked out recently um, by Ibo Aslo. Uh, I think like last month, um, and then he's had a, a a submission win. He knocked out uh, Bukowskis uh, in Brazil with a, a superb check hook uh, in the second round in Sao Paulo um, at the end of last year. And then he fought Tyson Pedro uh, as well in March. So a quick turnaround here. This is his third fight in, in what, five months? His second uh, in, a, in a couple of months. So he, he's busy. He, he, and I think that's just it for me, that the freshness that he, he's, he's, he's bringing. You know, he's got that momentum. He's got that winning feeling. He's in front of the Brazilian crowd again. They've seen him you know, light up Bukowskis. Uh, in, in Sao Paulo, and now it's. Uh, I think, unfortunately for Andy, uh, Anthony Smith, it's uh, it's now it's Rio's turn uh, to see what uh, Petrino can can deliver. Uh, and yeah, I just don't see too much hope for Anthony Smith other than him trying to spoil this and uh, an old man in. But Petrino, well built for the division, and he looks strong, pretty much everywhere uh, and possibly inexperienced might be his downside if you know if anthony smith can get anything off but i just can't see it at this stage for smith i, w I want to try go smith he's like i said he's been i've i've, I've really liked him over these his, his game he's, he's one of the most game fighters you'll ever see he does the commentary i like i like his takes i like listening to his thoughts on uh on mma and fighting um I think it might be time for him. I think one more one more loss here, and I think he's going to be on that commentary desk doing what he probably does best now, talking about UFC. He's entertaining. He's a good voice. Um, and I think it's time. I think they're feeding him to the wolves here. Young, hungry Vita Petrino. He's, I can't see anything. I don't want to say I can't see anything other than a win because Petrino's 26. We've talked about that inexperience a couple of times now. Um, but I think he's got this... The fans will will Petrino on for the win. I think, yeah, I think he wins. By what method of victory, though, Sam? I'm not too sure. Like I said, he's he's good on the he's he's actually quite good on the ground as well. Petrino is very well rounded. Um, so I'm just gonna play it safe. I know it's boring. I know we're here to have fun and have some good picks, but I'm gonna play it safe and have V to Petrino. My steady my steady win, just nice and win. Nice, <laughs> a nice win from the card. Get it on the bets and get yourself a couple, uh, a bit of profit just to get your evening going. Yeah, I, I, I've got a couple. I, yeah, I, obviously it's another kind of strong favourite. I think Petrino by KO, TKO, DQ. That, that's even money. Which I don't know because I think Anthony Smith could could spoil this a little bit. But then I, I just don't know where he, I just don't know where he's at. And I, I think you know he, he could. You know, if he if he is getting a bit of a pace, then he, he could he, he could potentially give this one up a little bit. Uh, but the fight to go the distance is nine to five. I, I'm just not sure. I just fancy Petrino. I, I think Smith, when he loses, I, I think he, he he's tend to well, he's had a couple of decision losses. Um, that one to Johnny Walker, but you know Khalil Warranty knocked him out. You know, and Kaliev ground and pound uh, defeat. Um, he, he lost in the fifth round to to Glover Texera as well uh, in 2020. Yeah, again, a ground and pound defeat. So I got to see something like that where he, where Petrino, maybe third round, he's tired him out. He's he's got him down and he 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 just grinds it out on the floor and, and gets an opportunity and and finishes him. Um, so I'm I'm going to go for Petrino to get it done inside the distance. Like it. Uh, the second to last fight, uh, the co-main event is the <laughs> better way <laughs> to say it of the evening, is um, Jonathan Martinez versus Jose Aldo. Sam, where are we going with this uh, amazing fight? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm flip-flopping on this one a little bit uh, all week. I, I like Jonathan Martinez. Obviously, I love Jose Aldo. I, I don't know where Jose Aldo is, is kind of at. You know, he, he was retired a couple of years ago. Um, about 18 months ago after his loss to, to Marab and then has been boxing since three boxing fights. I mean, he's still talking about boxing potentially after this. So I'm not sure you know, what, what is his status in the UFC? Is, is he coming back for this? Cause it's in Brazil. He's got a fight left on his, on his contract. Is he, is he, 
if he wins this, is he is he going to stay in the UFC and you know try and go on a, a bit of a, a run again? Because he was doing well uh, at bantam weight before that Marab fight. He'd won three in a row uh, against Marlon Vera, Pedro Munoz, uh, Rob Font uh, as well. So he fought for the title uh, as well against uh, Petr Jan. Uh, lost that, lost his first one down at, at bantamweight against Marlon Marais, wasn't it? It was like a controversial uh, one and still got the title shot off, off the back of it. So he's, he's kind of had a mixed record at, at, at bantamweight, but he has some good wins there. Um, so I, I'm just unsure whether, what he's coming back for. Is it just a fight in Brazil? Is it to kind of see out the the, the UFC chapter of his career? Um, so I think he's going to go all out and try and, uh, and, try and get the win as, as Jose Aldo does. But I don't know. I just don't know the opponent, whether that's it's a good opponent for him. You know, someone with a, a similar kind of kickboxing style, but obviously a younger guy, a guy that's hungry, a guy that's stopping people with leg kicks. You know, if Jose Aldo was the king of leg kicks back in the day, you know, Jonathan Martinez, you know, stopped two of his last three opponents you know, just with leg, leg kicks. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of a... a a bit unsure of, of, of what, what to go for. There was rumors, I think, that, that this, uh, that Dominic Cruz was, was kind of lined up to be Aldo's opponent for this. And I kind of prefer, I think, a, more of a legend fight for Aldo at this, this stage of his career. Because so, I think if, if Aldo's been boxing and he's not coming back permanently to, to MMA, maybe he's kind of just misses a beat in the first couple of rounds and, and, and before he gets his stride back. And Jonathan Martinez, who can be a bit of a slow starter, but if he can get his, his kicking game off, uh, Martinez, I think he could maybe catch the the eyes of the, the judges uh, and maybe kind of get this one done by decision. Um, yeah, I've kind of been up and down on this one. What, 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 what are you thinking? Yeah, I've legend in Jose Aldo, one of the greatest of all time. I think he's, he's probably not the, he's not, a, he's not the GOAT, but he's in, he's, I think he has entered the conversation. He's, the fact he went on the legendary winning career so young in his career. I think he lost the title to Conor. It was at age 32. It was something ridiculous when he's been around for so long, lost to Conor, went on a massive run, got another title shot. Like I said, it, it's no shame losing to Mirage. Just barbarous feeling. My pronunciations today have just been unbelievable. But I'll just say, Mirab losing to Mirab is no is no joke. He's obviously one of the one of the best fighters in that division. Like it's a free fight win streak before. I love how I love Aldo, but what a tough matchup. This Martinez is a monster himself. I can I've got an image of them just going leg kick for leg kick. Aldo famously went away from it. Uh, was the king of leg kicks then started. Somehow disappeared. There's a few videos online about him, him just deciding never to leg kick anymore. But I think it's coming back. They've put him against a, a leg kick specialist in Martinez. Aldo's coming back. Then they go leg kick for leg kick and they have some fun and then they're, they're going to knock two hells out of each other. Um, Aldo's not losing to, in that Brazilian crowd on his last fight. I can't see him losing. I can't see him going down without a blaze of glory. So I'm gonna have some fun and go Jose Aldo by TKO. Ooh, nice. I like it. Uh I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna spoil the party. <laughs> I'm gonna go Martinez spoiling the party. Um just getting off of oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick Martinez by decision. Just get it before I think Jose Aldo's gonna finish this strong and the stronger fighter. But it's, it might take him a little bit of time just just to get that step back after boxing. I just don't like the the, the break that he's had um, going off to do something something different. If he comes back, you know, it may be looking a bit different. It, it might just take him that that little bit of time. Uh, Martinez, those kicks are damaging. You know, whether he chooses to leg kick, whether he he goes, you know, he, he starts to to look higher uh, for Aldo. You know, he's a southpaw as as well. So I, yeah, I, I think. Martinez can maybe do enough in the first kind of half of the fight to, to catch the eye and then go toe to toe with Aldo as he chases it in the in the kind of last part of the, the, the fight. So yeah, I'm going Martinez by decision. I Whoa. think <laughs> I think against the um, of Rio in Rio. That's a brave call. I know that yeah, I know it is. I know it is. I'm gonna go 29. Uh, it's 29 to 20. I just I just yeah. I could see Jose Aldo losing all three rounds and getting the decision still, but um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to go Martinez to spoil the party. 
yeah. why not? Why not? He's young and hungry, and I, yeah, if I, if I knew Aldo was coming back for like a bit for a proper run, and he's he's going for the belt again, or he's coming back and he wants to, I don't know, he wants a, a like a BMF fight or whatever, or, or some good legends fights. I, yeah, I can I can go with that, but I don't I don't know. I think Martinez is is kind of a tricky opponent, and it's one where. Maybe they, they wanted something else. You know, Dom Cruz would have been great. I would have loved I would love to see that fight. Still would after this, you know, win or lose for Aldo. But yeah, if it's it's just that thing, isn't it? Like you said there, that it's like if he's coming back, this is it, you know, and he's going out in Brazil. Can he go out with it? Can he go out with a defeat? Can, well, you know, will he just will he just manage to to eke it out? Use all that experience, but I, I think it, what I'm sticking I, with Martin as the atmosphere will be absolutely incredible. He's, he's known as, like you said, the King of Rio. Whatever, whatever the result, it's going to be a spectacle. Martinez, as you said, is an absolute animal of a fighter. Um, I think he's on the up. He's, he's on the up trajectory. I'd say the sm- my brain tells me my brain does tell me Martinez, but my heart tells me Aldo wins in a blaze of glory where he's had his, some of his most famous wins. The crowd absolutely love him. I think that atmosphere will be crazy on Martinez. The Brazilian fans, you said, sat famously, famously very raucous, <laughs> not brilliant. I know they, they always go, they always get a bit nervous going to Brazil, especially when it's against a legend. You get stuff thrown at you. The, the, you get whacked in the crowd as you're walking in. It's, I think that atmosphere is going to be terrifying for Martinez. He's an animal, so it probably won't bother him. But it only takes. It only takes a bit of a bit of anxious, uh, something to happen. His head gets a bit distracted in that crowd with all the atmosphere. Aldo, yeah, I've, I've got Aldo, and like I said, them judges will be brave men to go against him on the distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my only drawback. But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm sticking with Martinez uh, anyway. <laughs> well, we're at it. We're at the uh, the main event of the evening. Um, We've got on Alexandra Pantoja uh, versus Steve Ursa for the flyweight UFC flyweight championship. Sam, take us through your thoughts. Yeah, obviously this is Pantoja's second defense of his title. It's again home crowd. He's had the homecoming on the fire truck. We've seen the pictures of him him going round Rio with the belt. You know, and now he gets to defend it in the octagon in front of his his people. So it's it's another one of them. Like Aldo, is anyone gonna? You know, be able to on the night be able to rip that away from him. This this kind of feels like Pantoja's uh, moment. He, he he won the title. He's had to wait a long time. Um, obviously with that Figueredo, uh, Moreno uh, quadrilogy that w- that we saw, he's had to kind of sit on the sidelines and and wait for that to to be done and dusted. But as soon as it was, you know, took his chance against Brandon Moreno with that split decision last July. Defended it in December against Brandon Royval. Put into bed that that rematch. Uh, as well, and you know, has, has has had a decent run. You know, he's he's fought, uh, you know, some of the, the the best around there. You know, his 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 run to the belt was was Manuel Cap, Alex Perez, uh, and Roy Val in their in their first fight, winning all three of three of those. So he, he's he's been around the block. He's fought in the UFC for a long time. He's eleven and three uh, in the UFC. He's he's on a good run. Yeah, he's all action. Uh, and again, I think, that, like we we're saying with the with the Brazilian crowd, someone that that, that is all action, he's going to try and, you know, whatever way that this this fight is is going, Pantoja, you know, will keep going, he'll keep he'll keep going, keep moving, keep making angles, keep shooting, and, and I think he, you know, he even if he's not being as successful against someone like Steve Ursic, who is is kind of the, the the taller fighter, he's he's maybe offers something different than. Um, that he's not seen recently in 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 the octagon even though he is coming in at, at number 9 with only three three fights in in the UFC i think he does offer something a little bit different uh, steve ursig but i think yeah, even if he's not at his best pantage over five rounds i think his work rate um i, I think will 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 kind of maybe steal this one but i kind of like ursig he, he's he's not we don't know too much about him he's been in the ufc um again short period of time i think 10 months you know, a couple of, of solid decision wins um, over David Jovak and uh, Alessandro Costa as well. Knocked out Matt Schnell in March. Quick turnaround here, a bit like uh, Petrino we spoke about uh, earlier. So he's got nothing to fear. He's he's coming in fresh, number nine. Um, you know, has, has trained all his his life for this. You know, he's he's good on the feet. He has nice rangey boxing. He, he's good on the ground as well. Has quite a lot of submissions uh, on his on his pro record. Uh, as well so 
yeah, I, can't, I think this could be you know, a better fight. I think people are building maybe a SIG a little bit up, uh, a bit more up um, as, as a, con, uh, a possible contender to, to to win this, you know, since it's been made. I think when it first got made, everyone was a bit like, oh, yeah, I don't know, Steve Ersig, not really had too much about him, if you've heard of him at all. But I think more the you kind of look at it, maybe the unknown of this uh, is making it all the more uh, intriguing, especially when you see him head to head, and you know, you know, Ersig, you know, is the is the taller guy, is rangy, but I think I think Pantoja will will get this one, this one done. Um, yeah, I think the flyweight merry go round. It's been Pantoja, Roy Val, Moreno, Figueredo. There's been these four up there that have all all probably championship worthy. Most of them have passed the title around to each other. They've all had to go. Uh, and I think that's made the back end of the flyweight. It's obviously, as you said, delayed anyway with the quadrilogy. Then there's been a couple of uh, rematches. It's it's been it's been a it's been a tough couple of years. It's been an exciting couple of years fight wise, but tough couple of years for anyone not in them four or five fighters at the top of the division. There's not really been much room to get in. So well done, Steve. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Seg on beating Max Nell, like I said, in a knockout, and he's, he's, he's pushed his way straight through. Um, I'm sure some other fighters in the division won't be happy. Uh, as you said, we, we still don't know too much about him. He's had three fights. He's obviously he's obviously got knockout power. Max Nell's no, no shrub. He's a, he's a good fighter, Max Nell, and he's, he, he, he knocked, <laughs> knocked Matt out pretty convincingly. It was a great knockout for ones who want to watch it, um, get a feel for what uh, Steve Ersegg's about. Pantoja's 34. I think he's got one big win in him, and I think it's at Rio, and I think it's in this Brazilian crowd, as we're saying. I can't see a world where Pantoja doesn't win. I've, I've, I've loved Pantoja for years. He's an exciting fight. You can do it again. All four of them fight. They can, they can all do a bit of everything. They've all got good ground games, really fast on the feet. Great, great, um, great uh, stand up. Great stand up. Uh, Pantoja, like I said, high energy. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think Pantoja wins this method of victory. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a bit out. I'm gonna go method of victory. Alexander Pantoja by submission. I think you're beating down that crowd. That crowd gets a bit more. As I said, it'll be so loud. It'll be so raucous. It'll all be going off in every angle. You'll see videos of it all. It'll be crazy. Uh, and I think Pantoja. Gets the win, beats down Urseg uh, slowly, surely, and I'm going round three submission for the win. Nice, nice. Got to be rear naked choke. He's got all four of his subs, rear naked choke. Rear naked choke. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I think tough uh, Urseg might be just coming in. You know, Aussie tough. Is it? That he might just see this one, see this one out, and he he might be able to keep him at range a little bit, and then. Um, it just gets ground down uh, by the end of it by Pantoja. So, so I'm, I'm going to go decision. Um, I do like that knockout of, of Matt Smelly, Snell. He's not had too uh, many knockouts, but then um, the last knockout of um, Pantoja's career was also against Snell in uh, 2019. Overhand right, left him face planted uh, in the first round. So he does have knockout power as well, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go over this one going for a, a decision. Um, I, I think that it, it's gonna go the full the full five. Uh, Erso is gonna have some moments. He's gonna announce himself. You know, as a real player in this in this division, I think he's got a good future. Uh, you know, especially now you know the likes of Figure Figueredo's gone gone up. You do see a lot of rematches. There's obviously more Mokaev who's, who's kind of waiting in the in the wings uh, potentially as well for for a title shot. But I think he Erseg you know, win, wins this, uh, and then he's kind of announced himself, you know, as a, a, a top five fighter, and we see him back, you know, maybe one, once Pantanja loses the the belt, we see him, you know, have another title shot um, with the UFC, especially going back to Australia quite a lot uh, now uh, that he maybe makes a, a, a turnaround, fights again, uh, and then and then comes back for another another title shot. But I'm going Pantanja, yeah, for the decision win, uh, Ersig to, to battle this one out. Decision win for Pantanja, 11 to 5. Uh, you're getting uh, for this. So I, I'm, 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 yeah, I, I'm going with a champ to get it done. Yeah, both uh, 
whatever it will be, it'll be great atmosphere. I think Twitter will be the place to uh, <laughs> place to be on this one. There'll be videos from the crowd, video of the atmosphere. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. I think they're all good fights. Like I said, a few un unknowns throughout the card, a few people who on uh, household names it doesn't have probably star power especially if UFC 300 but don't have the star powers probably most uh, UFC uh, fight night uh, fight, UFC events um, but I think it'll be a good one they'll all be exciting you've got Aldo in there you've got which is always good Pantoja is always exciting you've got Michelle Pereira you've got Paul Craig Barallo who was uh, like I said a rising contender there's there's Brazilians all over the place. The crowd will be going crazy, uh, and it'll be, I think it'll just be a fun watch. Yeah, it'd be good. Yeah, I like the fight as well. The the top of the prelims where you've you've got Jack Shaw uh, against Brito, and that's a good fight as well. I, I have no idea with that one. I've looked at it a, a few times this week to try and pick a winner. Obviously, I want Jack Shaw to win, but I just don't know. I mean, both both are great fighters. I mean, that's just that's a, like, a proper a proper fight at the top of the prelims. You've got to go, Jack Shaw. You've got to go for the Welshman himself. I'm going Jack. I think he'll beat uh, Brito. Brito's had some massive wins, though. Andre Feely, Diego Lopez. Yeah, but that, that's yeah, outstanding fight. He's, he's a future title. Uh, he's a future title contender, Jack Shaw, I believe. But so is a Brito. So I think we'll both see them in a couple of years, probably headlining a, an event like this uh, in the uh, in the. In the 310s, 315s, maybe we'll uh, we'll see both of these at the top billing and uh, what a fight for the future. Yeah, let's hope so. Sam, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for this, Sam. Thanks for inviting me on. Uh, I've had loads of fun. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll do it again soon. Yeah, most definitely. Nice one. Cheers, Joe. See you, Pat.